Welcome to Trade Port Connection with Tommy. This is the results for the WWE Money in a Bank pay-per-view from last night. We apologize. I was tired after pay-per-view. My daughter wore me out from uh, her uh, playing with me. And here we go with the results for the show. But just a little bit of news. Congratulations to Hurricane Shane Helms. Uh, they announced he and his longtime girlfriend, Karen, were engaged to be married over the weekend. You can follow him online at this link here, twitter.com, backslash Shane Helms Tom. Congratulations again to the happy couple. Oh, they already have a son named Sebastian together. And I'm here, I'm, I'm going to show you a pic of the Money in the Bank advertisement. Aired live on pay-per-view from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Wells Fargo Center. And here's a, going to be another link posted right here that you can watch the actual pre-show online on WWE Fan Nation uh, uh, site on YouTube. The show opened with Josh Matthews hosting the pre-show panel with Big Show, Kofi Kingston, Vicky Guerrero, who was remarkably calm considering her current character. They put over Money in the Bank. And sent, that, sent it down to Michael Coleslaw, JBL, and Jerry the King Lawler. We set up a video that showed how the Usos earned their title match and a mini feud that ensued. The Usos versus the Shield for the WWE Tag Team Championship. Jay started against Rollins. Jay scored a several, several roll up near falls, and Rollins retreated to his corner. Reigns tagged in. Fared no better than at the, as the Usos started out in control. Jimmy tagged in and went for a super kick on Reigns, but Rollins pulled him out to the floor and they regrouped for the internet commercial break. Back from the break, Rollins hit a surprise clothesline and tagged in Reigns, and Reigns botched a corner whip, but hit a sick looking clothesline on the apron that turned Jimmy inside out. And the Shield worked the standard heel team moveset, and Jimmy almost made a tag, but Rollins pulled Jay down to prevent it. And then the match went to the floor. To, he clotheslines Jimmy, and Reigns rolled him back in for the for another near fall as they go to another internet free commercial. Back from commercial, Jay flew over the top rope to take out both Shield members. Speaking of which, I wonder if the app actually sold the commercials too. Uh, when they do Raw, they show footage on the app. Hmm. He rolled uh, Rollins in the ring and hit a high cross body for a two count. He hit a quarter but splash and a big slam for another near fall. He, 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 taught, he taught about what he wanted to do and decided to climb up. Rollins stopped him and hooked up a super cut for a super click. But Jimmy and Reigns ran out and uh, ran in for the four man Tower of Doom. The Philly crowd loved it. Rollins went for a tag to Reigns, and Jimmy pulled Reigns down to prevent it. Nice spot. Jay hit a super kick and hit, hit the top rope splash. Reigns broke the count. At the perfect time, what a great near fall. Jimmy tossed Reigns out to the floor, but Reigns knocked him out on the floor as well. Jay tried to climb the turnbuckle for a super Samoan drop, but Rollins slid out and hooked up for a power, power bomb. The Shield then won the match at 14 minutes and 47 seconds. So, uh, Ray tagged in, uh, punched Jay to get him to let go of the turnbuckle and hit the spear after Rollins buckle bomb for the win, for their win. Wow, the match finished hot as hell. Uh, the action before the second commercial was vanilla, vanilla tag teamwork. But they found overdrive in the last few minutes, so they loved it, and they may have actually sold a, pay a few pay-per-views with just that match. Well done by both teams. The panel put over the match. Vicky, Miss Piggy Guerrero, put over the pay-per-view as, as her doing. A video put over Rob Van Dam returned tonight. They closed the show with a hype for the Raw ladder match and speculated over whether there would be a replacement for Kane. Yes, there was. Stay tuned for who it was. They sent it back to ringside for the introductions for the SmackDown ladder match. And then your money in the bank pay-per-view starts. The video hyping the show. 
And fine Dango finishing his entrance. I guess that song played for like five minutes or so. Do you like the singing to it now? Anyway, the crowd was into it. And then followed up by Zeb Coulter and the Aryan Youth made their entrance with Zeb cutting the same cookie cutter promo about illegals. The crowd actually did the We the People gimmick with them. Rose Scholars came out and, and tried but failed to draw any real heat. He was with a cheap Rocky insult. Wade Barrett was out next. So we get the SmackDown version of the Money in the Bank pay-per-view match. Up first, I missed almost the entire first match. All I saw was uh, Sandal pulling down the, the briefcase, and that was it. Well, that's why I'm getting the results from the results. <clears throat> okay, Wade Bear versus Cody Rose versus Dave Damian Sandow versus Dean Ambrose versus Fion Dango versus Jack Swagger versus Antonio Cesaro in the World Heavyweight Championship Money in the Bank match. Everybody brawled to start off the match and the Real Americans destroyed Rose Scholars with the first ladder bumps of the night. Swagger set up the first set, set up the first ladder, but Ambrose ran in and pulled him down. Ambrose then tried to climb the ladder, but Bear stopped him. Fandango kicked Barrett and hit a slingshot leg drop on the ladder on Barrett. Fandango then sold his leg being hurt, but it seemed to be a work. Sandal hit the suplex onto the ladder on Fandango and tried to climb, but Barrett pulled the rung off the ladder and beat Sandal with it. Hmm. Was it staged? Hmm. Or was it wood? Hmm. Barrett uh, tried to climb, but the real Americans pulled him off for a nasty European uppercut. Ambrose tried to sneak up the ladder. Swagger tried to stop him, but took a tornado DDT from the ladder. The spot fest continued with Cody hitting a muscle buster type move on Cesaro on a ladder, and yeah, it was. The muscle buster is the same move that Samoa Joe uses. Uh, Swagger went up the ladder, but Barrett knocked him off with the bull hammer. Fandango ran up and hit a sunset flip bomb on Swagger off the ladder. Ambrose ran and he hit, it, hit, it, hit his front DDT on Fandango. He used the ladder to take out everyone, but he botched a skin the cat type move that led to him getting dumped to the floor by Swagger and Cesaro. The real Americans tossed the ladder from the ring. Cesaro, <coughs> Cesaro stood on, the, on Swagger's shoulders. <coughs> How many times has this been tried? <coughs> Cesaro reached for the briefcase. Standing on the shoulders, but Cody hits a missile drop kick on Swagger and knocks them both down, crashing to the mat. Cool spot. Cody hits crossroads on everybody and sets up a bigger ladder in the ring. He climbed it, but Ambrose caught him. Cody uh, got busted open somehow, but he dumped Ambrose off the ladder. The shield ran in and took out everyone to allow Ambrose to climb the ladder. The Usos ran out to attack the shield, so we have extra entrance into this match. Four on top of the regular six or seven guys. And they battled to the floor and the real Americans joined in. Ambrose climbed the ladder, but Cody pushed it over for the big fall spot on the brawling crowd. The Philly crowd went crazy and uh, as Cody climbed the ladder, Sandow ran in at the last second, dumped Cody and grabbed him the briefcase to win the match. The match started out as a spot fest, but it settled into a nice narrative in the second half of it. And it finished hot. I also love Sandow as a winner. I guess that means a feud between him and him and Cody for now. I can't say I'm looking forward to that. Because it means turning Cody face. Well, so be it. I guess his mustache thing will go away. As John C uh, uh, and uh, John Cena and uh, I was, believe it was a rock. What's that on your face? Surely ain't no milk, milk mustache. Get that worm off your face, he says. But we shall see how it turns out. Still a very good opener. J.R. Justin Roberts introduces Brad Maddox who came out to, with no music and called Roberts Jeff. Maddox said he, he was honored to be the new GM and thanked Vince for the trust. He said he didn't, he didn't think he could feel the, step, the shoes of Vicky because he didn't look good in high heel. He played it up like a bad comic. Maddox put over Vicky Guerrero and then... They showed her 
Up in the pre-show panel, he tried to get the crowd to chant for. It turned out as well as it could be expected. Maddie played a video that showed clips of Vicky getting embarrassed to set, set, set to cheesy music. Mrs. Music hit at the end of the segment, and I have never loved that song so more. Uh, what in the blue hell was that? Not only was it pointless, but it took away from time from the real wrestling act. And then it sucked. Why would you follow such a hot ass opener with that crap? Uh, match number two, Miz versus Curtis Axel, and that's where we that's where we caught it in, caught it for the show. With Paul Heyman for the Intercontinental Championship, maybe it was just. My setup, but Philly didn't seem too excited to see him. Miz ro rolled to the floor early and faced Heyman. He slapped his hands together and fell to the floor. Uh, uh, a lot Eddie Guerrero, the ref turned around, saw Miz, and ejected Heyman. The crowd cheered for that, but then turned around and chanted for Heyman. Axel took over immediately, but Miz quickly started his comeback. Miz set up for the cold school crushing finale, but Axel battled with him. Miz dropped him and went for the figure four, but Axel kicked him away into, into the ring post. He hit the perfect click. Four near fall with sole frustration. Miz came right back and hooked on the figure four. Axel sold it, flipped it, had it flipped back, and then made, the, made it to the ropes. He slid to the floor, and Miz uh, went to chase him. They slid back inside the ring and Axel kicked Miz in the face and hit the finisher for the win. And the match took 19 minutes and 19 seconds. So it was what it was. It was surprised that by the Heyman injection. Or ejection. Uh, but that also made me curious for what he might do later at any rate. I think the point there was to show Axel had learned about getting attacked as the second guy back in the ring. But I don't think the WWE audience is used to that level of Subtlety. Match number three, the Divas squash match. I predicted to go about six minutes, six to seven minutes. Seven minutes at the longest. Uh, it was so fast paced, I only thought it went three minutes. Well, Taylor with Layla versus AJ with Big E. I, I predicted it, if uh, Caitlin was going to win, it was going to be uh, overpowering, but this was uh, way out of whack. A video recap their fight on SmackDown and Caitlin was sporting a brace on her left arm that, that she injured doing her, her doing the spear. Caitlin powered AJ around, but AJ got in a couple of submission holds. She went to the top rope, but Caitlin shoved her off. Langston caught AJ and rolled her back into the ring. Caitlin hit the spear, but couldn't cover because of her arm. AJ kicked Caitlin in the arm, and that was it. Basically, and locked on the Black Widow. Caitlin held, held on for a little while. But finally tapped out. Layla looked shocked afterwards. So my prediction is Layla gets the next title shot. Again, the match took 7 minutes, 9 seconds. The match suffered from too high expectations. They couldn't have been be better than the last month because part of the month was the nice part of it. Part of last month was the nice surprise. Now that we're expecting it, it didn't reach those expectations. It wasn't a bad match by any stretch, but I expected something more than we what we got. Match number four, Y2J versus Ryback. Ryback shoved Jericho around to start off the match, but Jericho went after the leg. The ref stopped in for absolutely no reason, as Ryback was selling and it and still selling a, a knee injury. But that allowed Ryback to reverse the springboard drop kick from Jericho into a hangman to take control. Jericho had a hot hope spot where Ryback slid in and slid in. It looked like Jericho kicked him flush. Ryback recovered from it and hit the belly belly suplex, followed by the mat, the meat hook. He lifted for the shell shot, but Jericho escaped. Jericho went for the code breaker, but Ryback caught him and power bombed him. He hit the second one and covered him for two count. Jericho bounced out of the corner, out of a corner whip, and hits a low drop kick. He got right back in the ropes and hits the code breaker through the ropes. Ryback fell to the floor and barely beat the ten count. Jericho uh, charged at, at Ryback and Ryback popped him up into a gorilla press. He brought Jericho down for the shell shot, but Jericho reversed it. 
and to a DDT for a two count. Jericho went for the lion thought but Ryback rolled out of the way and hooked hooked him up for the roll up win. And the match took 11 minutes 21 seconds. Okay, well, that was a pretty decent match, but a lame ending. How lame has your monster become when he is winning my roll up? I just don't understand what they are doing with Ryback right now. Jericho is scheduled for TV this week. Smackdown only if memory serves, but he was on Raw. So he may yet get killed by Ryback. But boy, what a weak ending. A video hype the opening of the WWE Performance Center this week and then a video recapping the World Heavyweight Championship feud. Even Kevin Nash was thinking about how well that they did on this performance center. Dolph Ziggler vs. Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship match. As I expected, a uh, screw job in this one. And boy, did it happen. Uh, Ziggler started fast hitting the string of elbows. Jerry King always joked that uh, those elbows once killed him. Uh, he went for a uh, stinger slash, but Del Rio moved, and Ziggler hits the turnbuckle. Del Rio slammed him down, but he went for a drop kick. Ziggler moved, and Del Rio crashed to the floor. Del Rio recovered first, then climbed the rope. But Ziggler ran up and hit a rope, top rope face buster for a two count. Ziggler went for the famouser, but Del Rio steps aside and hits the German, su uh, German suplex with a bridge for a two count. Very nice looking spot. Del Rio goes for, the, for his setup in Sagiri, but Ziggler ducked and hits his famous her fortune count. I thought it was over then, uh, then myself. Philly woke up a uh, big time uh, during that spot and started ch chanting with Ziggler. But died big when Del Rio hit the backbreaker for a two count. Del Rio went for the top rope and jumped off. Ziggler dropped kicked him out of the air for a covered two count. AJ's music hit and she skips to down to the ring and for the distraction all the way around it. He asked her what she was doing and told her to get out. She looked upset but stayed while Ziggler reversed a lift into a swinging DDT for a two count. Ziggler climbed to the ropes again, told her told her to leave, and now that all the distraction for Del Rio to catch him and hit the reverse suplex for a two count. Ziggler shoves shelves Del Rio away on a cross up. On him the cross arm breaker as he countered it. But Del Rio recovered and popped Ziggler in the, up in the air. Ziggler crashed to the ground and took a super kick from, from his knees for a hot near fall. Del Rio pulled his knee pad down and exposed his knee brace. He went for another kick to Ziggler's head. And AJ slid into the ring. Ziggler turned, around, turned Del Rio around and AJ hit, hit him with the Divas title. Just as Ziggler went for the zigzag, the ref calls for the for the disqualification, rang for the rang for the bell as Ziggler flipped out. Post match, he left crying and apologetic. AJ in the ring as the fans chanted about her screwing him. Alberto Del Rio retained the World Heavyweight Championship by disqualification at 14 minutes 29 seconds. But actually, I did predict uh, Dolph winning that match. But if he didn't, of course, we AJ. Swerve. Better than average match though, but uh, uh, was the building well at the end? I like how it looked. Ziggler was in the air as the ref called for the bell. It was just timed well. The problem is I feel like I missed part of the match because AJ had no reason to interfere. I would have uh, uh, completely accepted this as pure logic had she had even a minor run in with Del Rio ringside. This just makes her look dumb. A video recap Mark Henry's outstanding work in his feud with John Cena. And Cena didn't screw it up too much work. I kid, but Philly wasn't kidding. Uh, they they had so much hate on Cena. Match number six, Mark Henry versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. Cena went right at it with, uh, with Mark, and Mark knocked him down. He showed Cena back in the corner and, and mushed his face. He went Cena into the corner and then hit a running splash for a near fall. Cena rolled, rolled to, the, to the floor and Henry followed. He caught Cena and, and hit him with a front suplex across the stairs. He rolled back in for a two count and then dove on Cena when Cena used the ropes to try and stand. 
And he hammer tossed uh, Athena to the floor and then went to the floor and hammer tossed him back into the barricade. Tossed him into the barricade. Athena tried to come back and the crowd instantly started booing him again. Henry closed line them and the crowd instantly cheered. Hilarious. Athena had another hope spot where he lifted Henry and collapsed. Then the crowd reacted the same. Athena finally came back with the five moves of doom. But he collapsed on the attitude adjustment attempt. Henry went for the world strongest slam, but Cena escaped and nailed the DDT. Henry stood as Cena hit the attitude adjustment for a near fall. Cena sold being frustrated and went to the top rope. He jumped off, but Henry caught, caught him and hit the world strongest slam for a near fall. Henry sold being frustrated and ripped the turnbuckle off. He went for the stairs, but the ref fought with him as the ref put the chairs back. Henry ripped another turnbuckle cover off and tried to throw Cena into it, but Cena drove, drove Henry into it and, it and then locked on the STF. Henry made the, made the escape to, uh, uh, to the ropes and Cena broke. Henry kicked Cena back into, back into the ref and then hit the low blow for a two count. Henry went for a world song slam, but uh, Cena slid out and hooked the STF again. Henry started to crawl to the rope, but Cena dragged him back in and hooked it in for an almost immediate tap out. And eventually it was the tap out. And Cena wins 14 minutes, 42 second match. A very good match with a very unsatisfying ending. Henry showed once again that he is doing the work of his life. And credit to John Cena who worked very well with him. Cena making Henry tap was the least palatable ending that I could come up with, but it wasn't expected. A video recapping the well done build to the latter match. RVD was first to a good response, but Brian got the best response. I was I predicted Brian Daniel Bryan to win, but that was one of my miss predictions. But the ma next match was still, okay, yeah, well, it was uh, the Money in the Bank ladder match. Five guys in the ring. CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, Rob Van Dam, Randy Orton, Christian, and Sheamus for the WWE Championship match. No Kane, they took him out of the match and didn't tell you who's to replace him. But later in the match, Curtis Axel comes down for his involvement in it. Hello with Paul Heyman. Well, to start off the match, the RVD champ broke out. All the other guys... Stared at him, he started to do the thumb pointing gimmick. And they all attacked him some, somewhere. The crowd uh, cleared RVD and, and then Seamus remaining for a battle until it was Punk versus Bryant. Which Philly crowd appreciated. They didn't do much, but it was a cool moment. Rapid fire run ins led to RVD hitting all of his signature, signature spots on the ladders, including a five star frog slash on Orton. Seamus said, uh, set the big gimmick ladder from the ring to the announce table. You can see where the ladder was cut. Just like the with Sankara, Seamus lifted Brian to put him through the ladder. But Brian fought away and hit his running knee from the apron. Orton set up a ladder in the ring and started to climb. Guys kept running in and someone set up a ladder beside the first one. All six guys ended up on top of the two ladders and a very cool... Visual, all six guys fell down and sold the crash. <coughs> Seamus, the only thing missing from this match was Shelton Benjamin jumping from the term, uh, top turnbuckle to the top of the ladder. We'll make it a seven man fall. Uh, this time of year, I miss Shelton Benjamin in this type of match. Horton again, uh, let's see. Seamus recovered first and took out everyone. He climbed the ladder only to have Brian stop him. He hit the clubbing forearms on the ladder and dumped Brian to the mat. But CM Punk pulled him off and hit the high knee against the ladder. Punk climbed behind him and rode the ladder to the mat with Seamus pinned underneath. Punk uh, took a bow afterwards. Punk set up the ladder again, but Orton stopped him and hit, the, hit his home DDT. Christian hit the spear on Orton, only to have RVD use the ladder to knock him down. RVD tried to climb the ladder, but Christian stopped him. They battled until RVD hits the frog splash from the top of the ladder in a big spot. 
Seamus pushed the ladder over on RVD. Brian kicked uh, Seamus from behind and did his kick on both men. Everybody was going, yes, no, yes, no. I was going, orgasm, orgasm, orgasm. And my buddy was just uh, laughing their asses off. He puts Horton in the corner and hits the corner drop kick, followed by a dive on Plunk on the floor. He knocks Seamus off the top rope onto the gimmick ladder, and Seamus might have hurt his hand or arm. This is where he gets an injury of some sort. Couldn't see it on Raw. As you know, he's on the stage. Brian starts to climb the ladder, but Curtis Axel ran out, entering the match, and hits him with a chair. Axel drove Brian to the floor and hit, hit him with a chair a few more times. He starts to walk away, but Punk hits a GTS on him. Heyman runs out and yelled it, and he knocked out Axel for getting involved. Heyman stopped yelling at him and cheered on Punk. He climbed into the ring and continued to cheer for Punk. Hang on just a moment. He starts to cheer, uh, to rag him on, but here's a swerve. Just as Punk got to the top of the rope, top, top, Heyman slammed a nearby ladder into Punk's leg. It's the second time and Punk falls to the mat. He looked up at Heyman, but Heyman slammed the ladder on him again and left. Punk rolled away and was bleeding from, uh, from the head. RBD slid in the ring and started to climb. But Orton grabbed him and hits, the, uh, hits an RKO off the ladder. He climbed the ladder to win the briefcase and Orton posed as the show goes off the air. With Orton uh, winning the championship in, uh, from the, mon uh, the championship money shot with the briefcase at 26 minutes and 34 seconds for your main event. Uh, for the first 15 minutes of this match, I was convinced I was going to like the first one better. But the last 10 sold this as the match of the night for me. Lots of great emotion when Brian got screwed. Then Punk and Heyman thing to lead into SummerSlam. And all wrapped up with Orton winning and probably feuding with RVD before going at Cena. Nice hook going forward. All in all, this is slightly above average show. But ever so slightly, the opening match sets, uh, sets up a good pace. But WWE killed the moments with the dreadful Vicky Guerrero garbage. It took them a while to get it going after that, but the last three matches were solid. Even in, if the World Championship ending didn't make a whole lot of sense. <clears throat> and here's an update on the injuries uh, from the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. As WWE has announced that Christian chipped his tooth during the Money in the Bank. All-Stars match. Meanwhile, WWE also announced that Cody Rhodes needed five stitches above his right eye. And that's the person with the least amount of stitches. And you can read more at WWE.com. As WWE previously released photos of CM Punk and RVD with staples in their head. As noted earlier, uh, Christian, uh, again, Christian chipped his tooth while Seamus caught him with a punch. Speaking of Seamus, I'm surprised that he, is, that he hasn't popped up up on an injury report, yet considering some of the crazy spots that he was involved with. The Reddit Pro Wrestling fan from Fan Forum had a poster who has correctly listed the spoilers for the last 38 WWE pay-per-view matches prior to the show. The story of WWE's creative department having a leak made its way to Deadline.com. And that, uh, News, uh, thanks to .NET reader Joe Petro and others who passed along the story along with Reddit poster naming uh, Dolphins1925 as he was once again correct with his money in the bank supporter. Obviously, WWE isn't pleased that this is happening. The story states that creative didn't know about the issue until today. Though I strongly doubt that's the case since it's been a topic of conversation almost many online fans and people within the company over the last month or two. And that concludes my results for the Money and Bank pay-per-view. Thanks again. Peace out. God bless.